Good afternoon. I'm Lucas Panzica from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. The NFL Draft coming up a week from tomorrow. The NFL news of today. The Dolphins are exercising the fifth-year option for wide receiver Jalen Waddell and linebacker Jalen Phillips. Both were first-round picks in the 2021 NFL Draft. The NBA play-in tournament will continue tonight in the Eastern Conference. The Heat are at the Sixers. That's the 7-8 game at 6 p.m. And it's Hawks at Bulls. At 8.30. Also, the Atlanta Braves look to complete the sweep this afternoon at the Houston Astros. First pitch coming up in about 10 minutes. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Happy hump day, everybody. Welcome into Blaine and Mickey. What's everybody doing? Everybody, uh, synchronize your watches. We are eight days out from the draft. Eight days out from day one. Eight days. Eight more days of speculation, of rampant rumors, of finding out that a guy was great, isn't great anymore, that, you know, suddenly Joseph has character issues. Or <laughs> I, I'm still waiting for... Yeah, Joseph has character issues, man. Uh, we've... We, because, you know, we're just two weeks away, I, you know, his attitude, uh, you know, he's a little diva, mm -hmm. he, he, you know, he, he really likes his uh, bananas cooked with caramel, mm -hmm. and we just don't do that. You mean you're he waiting for my... bananas foster. You're oh, waiting for that my, is so good, isn't it? Oh, my. <laughs> you're waiting for they my... They have bananas foster there in Tennessee, so I don't need to be there. <laughs> you're waiting for my ESPN uh, story to drop. Where, 100%. Where, uh, this guy had a trouble past and did this really bad thing that one time, so we should highlight this 50 times during the draft process. I don't know. What I'm just waiting mean. for that to happen to somebody because we've reached the point of diminishing returns. I was listening to Bucky mm -hmm. Brooks and Daniel Jeremiah. I'm listening to their oh, yeah. podcast, and those guys were both former scouts. And so they had this – Bucky said, this point, man, what – what were you doing? And he's like, just like calling to confirm where people would be on draft day. He said, you can't keep evaluating people forever. At some point, your evaluations are done. And they're stacked and they're rated and everything is what it is. And they were giving all the the tasks that they were given by their bosses. Like, here's what I did these last few days. And I had to call everybody's agent, make sure they were still their agent. And all I could think of was, okay, so that's what's going on around the league. There's got to be some big story that happens within the next few days, guys. Just some random thing about somebody, and then you wonder, who put this out? A team that wants to get him, that wants them, you know, wants him to drop to them. And these are real people's lives. Yeah, that's the part I, I, I do. I, I do not like that. You know, and uh, you know, uh, first and foremost, you get a quick uh, indoctrination as a as a player. You know you're no longer in college. Everything's not hunky-dory. Everything's not nice. And some of those guys aren't equipped and ready mm -hmm. to deal with it emotionally because they're going to take it as personal because they're still going to be, as an athlete, like, that's not true. Why would they make that stuff up? Then they, they, they you know, they get emotionally upset. Uh, so, uh, you know, so I think, you know, a lot of agents and people surrounding them need to do a better job of trying to tell them what particularly could happen uh, with rumor mill, uh, so that way at least they know it could possibly be coming. Whether true or not, d don't worry about it because you've been meeting with the people and and you tell them, uh, hey man, if you you know have a clean record, then don't don't worry about it. That's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm not a big proponent of just making up outright lies about players just so you can navigate to get up. And that's the game. That's the game. But to me, the, the players don't see it that way. Organizations see it that way because they're trying to leverage their positions to get whatever player, whether it's them or someone else. Sure. So uh, it's unfortunate it has to be that way, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, it, to be honest, I, I had no idea. Naturally, I wasn't a high round pick, so I never had to deal with that. But uh, I definitely saw it and looked at it from a different lens uh, as a graduate of college to what I've been since I've been in media and radio and everything else. So it's really unfortunate because they they are not equipped for it, they just emotionally. And that's the part that, that, that guys are going to be pissed. They, they don't feel like people just made up lies on them for nothing. They, 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 
So, and some of it is real, and some of it isn't. So you have to discern from that, and you know, and people don't know. We, from just watching afar, just being fans of the sport of the NFL, mm -hmm. we don't know if it's true or not. So we we just believe what they say on TV, right? A lot of people do. Yeah, they do. Take it as gospel. Yeah. Oh gosh, that guy's a bad guy. Yeah. Oh man, that guy comes from a bad background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that he, guy's a, he's hard to deal with. with uh huh. It's, 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 and it's, it's stuff like, you can't even quantify. Right, right, right. And that's why they use those things. So then we have to, you know, kind of look through it. And I, I think other organizations know, but us as people on the outside, from the media perspective, fans, uh, we don't know. We really don't know. I'm not doing background checks on these guys and talking to people around them, friends, coaches, high school, college. I'm, I, I, no. I'm not, no, I'm not going to do that. So I, all I can do is say, well, why did that happen, mm -hmm. like, really – a week before the draft. <laughs> we heard nothing until then. So then that's what makes me say, I don't know about that one. I don't know if I'm going to believe that in totality. Uh, the all-timer of all time, though, is Laramie Tunsil with the gas mask. Well, I mean, they had pictures, so that was – But that somebody, dropped him, though. That dropped him. To leak it when they that did. That was intentional. That was – they. I wonder if that's who – the people who drafted him, are they the ones who did that? I, I'm serious. That's how the game works. Right. Because they wanted them. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember the Yeah, I remember the well, gas I mask I know you thing. do. Yeah, yeah, I bet you did. You was like, what? what a gas mask? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I was, I was, what is I that? Was confused, huh? what? Is, I mean, is that training was absolutely something? maybe the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, that was incredible. It was like, do what? And it was around the world in the snap of your fingers. Did they do it draft day or yes. the day before? Wasn't it draft was day? Was it draft day or the day before? It, it, it was insane. Because most of the time when that stuff happens, it's like the day of the draft. And you're like, oh, breaking news. I uh, was like, look, look at what oh happened. My. Look at what we found you uh, know in the they background had that of this person. Forever. And they waited. It, it probably was an uh, agent of uh, someone else who was on offense, had an offensive of tackle. They were probably okay. neck and neck. Here we go. I mean, that was hilarious. And now, hey, nobody's talking about any of that. And besides, he's the best tackle. Really. <laughs> I mean, look at him. He's, <laughs> he's out there killing. He's killing it. Oh, man, we can't even get past around him. His, but on his draft, Bavanka. here you go. This is a story about it. But on draft night. And that was real. Ten minutes before the event began, a video appeared on the Mississippi lineman's Twitter account. And it showed him donning a gas mask while inhaling a substance from a bong. As oh, a his result, own Twitter account? Somebody, I guess, hacked him and put it out. As a result, he fell all the way to 13th. What what tackles went ahead of him? And what pick and what team? Or if any. And he actually got taken by the Dolphins. Uh, oh, he got taken by the Dolphins and they then traded him? Mm -hmm. So did he, he actually ever play for the Dolphins? I can't even remember. Hold on here. But wow, well, I'll wait. But uh, man, that was, that was, hey, that one was hilarious. And it, it, it was him. All right. In the 2016 draft, uh, which was where Tunsil went, uh, before him, uh, Ronnie Staley went to the Ravens at number six. Ooh. Jack Conklin to the Titans at eight. Ooh. And then Tunsil was the third one taken See? off the board. Uh huh. And he, I'm pretty sure, was the number one. It might have been him back and forth with Staley. But, yeah. <laughs> so this dude played three years in Miami. He did play three years there. Then he goes to the Texans. Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl, missed most of the season. Pro Bowl, injured. Pro Bowl. Four out of five. But he didn't make any – did he make nope. it in the, in the he, Dolphins? No, he started every game for the Dolphins, but they Never. shipped him away. Yeah. Let's see what they traded him for. Oh, man, that's probably a, a bag of peanuts. Uh, a third-round pick. Traded to the Dolphins with a 2020 fourth-round pick. Oh. Uh a 2021 six-round pick, oh. and Kenny Stills to the Texans for a 2020 first-rounder, uh, a 2021 first-rounder, and a 2021 second-rounder. Wow. So they just wanted they wanted the picks instead but, of him. They didn't well, want to. I pay can't him. say this though. Yeah. When he got to the Texans, uh, you could tell he was in a different mindset to be the best. And I don't know if that was motivated by a contract going to be up in another year or what have you. But from that point on, when he got to the Texans, he was like, I'm about to dominate. I mean, it, it is clear. And I was like, dang, I, you know, I thought he was just going to be an average starter, what he did in the Dolphins. Uh, 
And it just shows sometimes players and the maturity level of where they can get to after, you know, getting up. A slew of money. Can't imagine what Bananas would do if he had a slew of money right now. If he I would had never see him again. Millions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he'd be, you know, <laughs> just hanging out, <laughs> kicking it <laughs> with his crew, right? So you just never know. And then finally, you know, some guys take a little bit longer. And I, I would say this, every individual is kind of individualized. As a former player, used to think it was probably just like groups of certain positions that were that way. Uh, but that's definitely... Uh, been knocked out the window because that's not true. It, it's just individual players. Some guys just, you know, get there and they sit back and relax on the couch and be like, nope, I got the money. I'm here. I've arrived. And I says, I'm just keep doing what I've been doing. And nah. So he, since he's gotten to the Texans, <laughs> he signed a three-year $66 million deal. I think he's the highest paid tackle, isn't he? Then he played through that. And then now he's signed a three-year $75 million deal. He was the number two overall prospect in this draft. Yeah, that's what he dra- yeah. And he got drafted at 13th overall. Yeah, that, that, it did hurt. Yeah, but hey, man, it was him, but it, they strategically did it on draft day because <laughs> they had it. They, they had to have that for a while. It could have been from four years ago or, you know, I, who sure. knows? I mean, four years before he even got drafted. It could right. have been his freshman year in college, sophomore year. I don't know. But uh, they got it. And every click. It's like, oh, there goes more money. Oh, there goes more money. Oh, there goes more. Oh, there. oh man, it was just like, whoa. You know what's so funny? I don't even know as a GM if I had him pegged it for us to take him, what I would have done in that situation. Like on actual draft day because there's an element of fear immediately. We've done all our due diligence. We found nothing. And then all of a sudden that crops up. I go, oh. Well, I'm taking Conklin. <laughs> I mean, what would you do, Benal? I mean, what would you do? I, I don't know. It's a I fear factor, right? Honestly, I think you'd st- the smart play would just to still draft him because nothing co- nothing comes up in all of this that you do for weeks and months I and think months. That's easy to and say after comes- the fact because he's a great player, but man, I mean, but, but in when, the like- moment, you have to be honest and real with yourself. You your instincts are going to go, oh. You have to take a back seat. Not to say yeah. you still wouldn't draft him, but you would have to take a back seat and take a second thought. There is no way. It's the human element. It's impossible. The other thing is, you've got to call your owner and you got to yeah, say, you Have you seen this? Gotta, right. And then you if you pick him, got a co Yeah. Sure. And if you pick him, then everybody in your organization, including the owner, for some teams, Amy's not necessarily out front, but a lot of teams, even the owner would come to the press conference or say, a bunch of the owners would even be at the press conference. So. The yep. GM would talk. The owner would talk. Here's why we took him. Mm-hmm. You're going to get a million Expert. articles about. Now, now, I'm glad you said all of that because that's exactly what happened with Big Jeff. Yes. That's exactly yeah. what happened. Even, it, even happen Amy spoke. Draft day, but, yes. So the human element is there, and he dropped in the draft because of it. I mean, different situation, but yeah. One incident, but on actual draft day, oh, I would have been like, uh oh. Ten minutes before, on his, I, I'm looking it up again a little bit more. Ten minutes before, he, he got hacked. It was put out on his own social media, and I had forgotten this. Somebody also hacked his Instagram. Uh, his Twitter is what got hacked with him in the bong. His Instagram got hacked and was showing messages of him asking for money from the old Miss coaches for rent and for other things. Oh, I, I'd I forgot all that. about that. And see, you see that, and you go, uh-oh, my job is on the line if I take this dude. Right. Immediately. It's almost impossible. And Miami still took him. And you're not, well, I, well, yeah, well, they got, they got, they felt like they got a steal. Yeah, 100%. Right. I mean, 13. they got the number one player. 13? Nope. The this, number two overall pick in the number draft? Number one offensive lineman, number two. I don't hey, know. We'll just answer all the questions. I don't know. <laughs> what, what would you have done, Mickey? I don't know if I, I don't know if I would have pulled the trigger if I had him as my guy. Having been an administrator, not at that level, I just know that everything you do gets questioned. Every dollar you spend gets questioned. To stand up in front of people after they just saw that and how horrified by by that that they would oh, be, my. I probably would have passed. Seriously, I, yeah. I thought I said, "Oh man, I, I don't even know if he's going to get drafted first round." And that's how stunned I was. I can I remember too today. I was like, "Whoa, wow." And then it was on his Instagram. So instantly when you're seeing it, you thought he posted it. You didn't think he got hacked. Why would you do that? <laughs> right? Why would he post that? He didn't give a crap. <laughs> he just Nobody would say, oh, it got hacked immediately. No, it kind of went a little bit there. Hey, man. <laughs> it's like, how, huh? much, how much money do you think that cost? Like just oh, a couple, mil- couple million dollars? Oh, I don't know. Him. It cost him. Who was first? 
Who was first Staley? In, in that draft? Uh, I don't know. That who was, was the pick, so but Jared, Staley was the so, first. Uh, yeah, tackle. Staley was the first tackle at six. That was the Jared Goff Carson Wentz draft. Oh man, they went that one was, two. Oh, uh, then Joey Bosa, who was actually ESPN's number one overall prospect in that draft, uh, oh. went oh, number three overall. And then Zeke. Jalen Ramsey, oh, Staley, was, DeForest Buckner, Conklin. I, I was just laughing. I, it was I, I was laughing and I'm still stunned. Like this is unbelievable. We'd have to see what Staley got. It's it's it's, it's stair stepped. It's yeah. not just going to be a, a gigantic amount, but it, it's definitely some money. Uh, and the perception of you that you have to rebuild and all of that stuff. Uh, and and think about this: Miami took him and three years later traded him to avoid paying him the huge contract, contract. essentially because mm-hmm. the Texans got him and then immediately but, gave him the bag. And people are like, are y'all nuts? Well, no. Yes, he is. Yeah, well, desperate times, desperate measures, and that's what happened. Uh, let's keep the draft talk going. You want to join this discussion, 615-737-1045. Latest Jim Wyatt draft, uh, mocking the draft where he's got 30 different people. It's about to be more than that, but oh, number's man. still 30. <laughs> let's give you the latest update on what uh, Titans are going to do at 7, according to to all the experts and get into that some. Again, you want to join 615-737-1045. It's Blaine and Mickey powered by all four seasons garage doors. Hey, that was us. And this could be you on the lake this summer. If you answer the call, a limited number of lake lots getting released to the public. And I'm telling you, like, this is right around the corner. Saturday, April 20th, your chance to experience not just lake living, but resort lake living at a fraction of the price. Two acre wooded estate lots start from just $79.9 or a lake cottage package with a boat slip. Just get after it. $349.9 lake lots with uh, a boat slip from $64.9. And here's the thing. They got walking trails and shoreline and clubhouse and concerts and pickleball and everything that you've ever dreamed about. So not only are you out there in the sun and having all the fun about 20 minutes from Knoxville, Tennessee, you got all the amenities you've been dreaming of. So why not call secure an appointment? You can ask. They got financing available. Times are limited for these appointments. Limited property release coming up April 20th, lakelivingtn.com, or better yet, call now, make an appointment. See it for yourself, 865-408-9992. Memories start here. Stinky, stinky, stinky. Is that what is the last time where you at an auto repair shop? Smelly, greasy old rags laying around. A countertop that would not dare touch. Another thing that stinks is repair shops that keep your car forever, and they're not honest. And they don't call you back when they say they will. Or was that your last experience at a vehicle repair shop? Well, hey, it's Blaine Bishop to tell you about Eurofix. Eurofix takes the stink out of European auto repair. And at Eurofix, you get a free 15-minute no-rinse inspection with an estimate at every visit and not high-pressure sales tactics. At Eurofix, you get a three-year nationwide warranty and a free loan of car with every repair appointment. And never pay dealer pricing. We're located all over the place for Eurofix in Franklin, Hunter Oaks, Murfreesboro, Bell Mead, and now Mount Julia. And all you have to do is just give them a call at 844-EUROFIX. That's right, 844-EUROFIX, or you can just visit them online at myeurofix.com. That's myeurofix.com. But I always tell them blanks, at you?
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Mickey the gangster. Gangster. Uh, Bananas raised the question, how much did that particular incident cost? Oh, we had a caller on who was going to talk about tons. So call back. We, I was reaching to take your call. Right. 615-737-1045. What did it cost Tunsil? Ronnie Stanley was drafted number six overall, correct? He was the first offensive lineman taken when it probably would have been Tunsil. He got $20 million as opposed to 13 So it cost him $7 million on his initial contract. I don't care who you are. $7 million, that's what it cost him on draft night. His rookie Never contract get that based on where if, he got picked. And you didn't know if he was going to get those two big contracts afterwards. No. Nope. Yeah, so nope. $7 million at the time. Like, now it's probably like, ah, whatever. But, like, yeah. back then, like, exactly. Oh, no, $7 million to him is in his couch cushions. But yeah. at that point in his life, yeah, $7 million. Uh, he he might have he, he teared up for a split second like, dang, man, that hurt me. Man, that's the How bong. Did... He made that teared up bong <laughs> <from all> smoke. <laughs> <laughs> the bong made it burn burning his eyes. <laughs> As a player. Yeah, the smoke like, burned his eyes. At, at, in his situation, like, what goes through your mind when you're sitting there and you're just... Oh, I, that's why I said I, I, I would have cried. Like seeing them pick, and it's not your name, and it's not you've been telling this whole time you're going to be, you know. Top well, first five. of all, you got to everybody in the world is calling your representation, saying, "What is this?" Yeah, and you remember, and, and all the stories. And at that time, it was he got hacked. He got hacked. Okay, he got hacked. But this is a real it's video. A real, it's a real video. It's not so AI. He got hacked, and somebody said, they, "But they, you did this." Though. Yes, <laughs> this is something you did do. You don't look twelve. This is pretty recent. So. uh <laughs> Yeah. I, oh, man. I say, I, I didn't even, hey, that's how good he was. I didn't even think he was going to get drafted in the first round after that. I, I really didn't. Yeah. <laughs> back back then, what year was that? 2016. Six, 2016. Yeah. Yeah. A <laughs> little, little different than today. But, uh, dang, man, that was, I was like, oh, man. I mean, it, I was so, I was speechless. I, I was, man, watch this. I was gassed. <laughs> <laughs> he's made 102.7 million if he plays through the current contract that'll put him at 163.8 oh man he's one of the best tackles in the nfl bro yeah he's yep all forgotten yep and yeah and you know and hadn't you know got cut for anything to this point oh no, by Michael, all accounts wood for him yeah a good citizen which yeah, last they, time you heard anything do, about him drug testing other than a contract extension yeah yeah yeah, I don't know the, the rules of of the drug testing though. There were players who thought that they could deceive the drug test. Though. Well, that was the birth of the Wizenator, Remember? Oh, I don't. I don't know about all of that, but <laughs> I I do know that that had happened. But it was like certain guys understood when they would give the test. Okay, and I, I I didn't. You know, I don't do drugs, so, so I didn't would, know. No, I can't do anything after this date, or yeah, I drink I a bunch like, of water. Or... What are you talking about? I mean, and the only reason why I know this is because the late great Josh Evans, oh. who who flunked like four tests, he's like, man, they, oh man, they screw me. And I said, so that can you just stop? <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey man, he's like, he looked at me dead in my face and said, absolutely not. Oh, I said, what? But you're gonna cost you yourself your career, man. This is the second time you can suspend it for games. Like you're gonna miss half the season. He said, "Well, there's a there's a way that I, I I just uh it just uh they they tripped me up." I said, "Tripped you up? What do you mean?" He said, "Well, there's a time when we know when they're gonna give us the test. How you know when they're giving us the test? How do you know that?" He said, "Well, I know." I said, "Well, obviously you didn't. You didn't know. You didn't know." <laughs> Ding dong. R.I.P. So, man, much respect. So which uh yeah, no which doubt. player in this draft uh, do you guys want to have something pop out? Like that, like the gas mask video on uh, mm-hmm. on draft day. Oh, I, I, so I don't want they can drop down to the anybody. Titans. I don't want to that yeah, video. I, I, don't, I don't want any story or anything. Uh, now, if you say somebody just drops in the draft who was projected in the first round, I mean, we can pick any player, really. I, I, I'm going to compare it to like, what happened to Will Levis. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, now everybody's talking about McCarthy should go like top four or five. I'm like, oh, okay. I, I, I haven't watched the quarterbacks, to be honest. Not, not like that. All I like to say is he's a winner. When they ask him, that matters. When they ask him to make a big play, he made. He the made play. it. Yeah, he just wasn't out there throwing for five thousand yards. And but that wasn't the offense. Yeah, he was oh, in no. a pro style offense. 
Which, why does that not carry more weight? Right. Can you right. help me understand I that? I don't know, man. That's I, I think like, that's why some people, and you know, nobody's even talking about Phoenix either. Like Jaden, that dude probably is the best passer in this draft. No one is talking about him. Like, like Jaden Daniels thrower? is the number two quarterback prospect that I've like seen recently. Like he's been mocked. Ooh. Jane Daniels. Oh. And I feel like he's coming from like the least NFL like offense. Well, I mean, he's projected to go to the Commanders as the second pick because I don't know if he's. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, Jay, some like, people like him even over Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. If you hear the draft experts uh, talk about his throwing ability, I you know their offense is. Uh, it's, you, you can see enough on there. I can I can say this. Like, well, he was throwing to some dudes though, but he was putting on the money. So you say Jaden Daniels? I don't think he. Uh, and, you know, all of a sudden, then Drake May was number two going into the season. All of a sudden now, nobody's talking about him. But, man, I start watching some film. I'm like, whoa, I don't know, man. He, he looked pretty good. Merrill Hodge had the quote about Drake May. Essentially, he, he was horrible, didn't he? You draft him and you will be fired. I'm putting it into context, but that's essentially what he said. I, he is I, going I to get be- you fired. I believe that when about I About Drake that. May, yeah. And I can say, ah, oh, well, I can see the other three guys are better than him at certain things. Okay. But to say something like that? Man, I don't know about that one, man. Does, I would never have said that. I'm with Blake. How does that drop off happen so quickly? Because you're right. He was like the consensus. Like he was Some in line for number, number one. one. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, ah, JJ McCarthy's better. Phoenix is better. Daniels is better. And he's like slowly slipping. And so I don't, I don't know, man. It, 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 but it, but is that someone some, poisoning the water, water for right. for Drake May? Like I don't know, man. Uh, yeah. His release is pretty slow. I yeah. Hey, man, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I heard that uh, he's a cat owner and doesn't like dogs. I mean, it could oh, be anything. Yeah, it's yeah, been it, crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Uh, he's he. Hey, man. He was he was making all school. the throws. I right, man. <laughs> Yeah, he was uh, he was pretty impressed. He's a pretty good athlete too. He can move around a little bit, man. So, okay, who's the third pick? The it, Patriots. Patriots. Man, I think he'd look. I think he'd be good in that. Wow. And then fourth is the Cardinals. And fifth is the Harbaugh's. Sixth is the Giants. What are the Giants going to do? I had written this in my notes. We can. The Giants to me are the wildest of wild cards here. I think. Nothing. So like. I'm like the Cardinals at four. So I've seen a lot of people say that they're going to trade out, but like you have a chance because as as much as the Patriots are talking about like, oh, we might not take a quarterback. You guys need a quarterback. I'm sorry, you cannot you cannot continue with Jacoby Brissett and is, is Bailey Zappi still their backup or did they release him? No, I think he's he's still their backup. You cannot continue there. with Jacoby Brissett and Bailey Zappi and expect to win in the NFL. Uh, as they, much as I like Jacoby Brissett. They got to take a quarterback. I mean, I think that's a general consensus. Cardinals got to stick and take, because Marvin Harrison's going to be there at four. I, I think, I, I think it, quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three. If you're the Cardinals and you take Marvin Harrison and you have your draft party, nobody can say a word. You, 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 took, you took the best consensus by everybody non-quarterback on the board. No, no one can say a word. Now, maybe they've scouted some... What if you're the Cardinals and you've looked this over a thousand times and you scouted it every way and you're like, we think Malik is better than him. We think Malik neighbors. Oh, what if what if they think that? Now, if you do that, what a draft party you're going to have. Yeah, that's why I'd get fired. When you trot out Malik neighbors. Yeah, hey, man. We, that would be something I would do as a GM right but, there. But it's their evaluation. Wait, it's right, theirs right. for their team. Well, it, it, it's also based off what offense they run and what they actually need. He's yep. a good run after the catch. When you see Marvin, I mean, Junior, you just say, wow, man, he he ran right by the guy, out jumped the guy. Uh, he's an outside receiver. I mean, yeah, is he elite? Yeah, but do I, do I already have one of those guys? I don't know what Arizona's situation is. But after the catch, man, Neighbors is pretty good. Bro. Mm-hmm. He, he might be the best in the draft. I've also seen mocks where the Giants trade up. To four to the Cardinal spot to take a quarterback. Yeah, I, don't I think that one. I don't. I don't. That doesn't make any sense to me because you could sit there at six and still have one of those top five quarterbacks. I think. Yeah. The ta- I, I think. The, I think the Giants are going to take a tackle or a wide receiver. I think they're going to play it out again. And you know, Daniels. You know, towards ACL, he only, he only played six games. He had bad stats though mm-hmm. for you know uh, interception to touchdown ratio. 
Uh, so I think that's where they go, tackle or receiver. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Th- I think that's a ploy to get people to try to uh, move up and trade with them. Yep. But you, they just gave him the money. Like, so you got to ride it. He got injured. He tore his ACL. So you got to ride it out one more year and see if he can get it done. You're going to take a huge hit. So uh, so that's kind of what I think about that. But situation. them taking Alt, the Giants, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Yep, tackle uh, or, or receiver, that's, yeah, that's, I think they're kind of just like the Titans. Who are, don't they have two tackles right now? They uh, just they got injured. A lot of those yeah, guys Yeah, they just can't injured. stay healthy. Mm-hmm. So I yeah that's why I say that. So, but a lot of people say they're gonna take a receiver, but I would I would put tackle on the list. Seven, an interesting place to be. Uh, Jim Wyatt's latest oh, mocking Jimbo. the draft. So it's it's still thirty. He hasn't grown to the giant list where he'd ask everybody what they think. It's still you know all oh, the all he, the he he knows my opinion. He knows mine. Yeah, I gave him my Vonte Mac no matter what. Vonte right Mac. Roma Dunze. I gave him my no matter what player, Roma Dunze. Uh, I gave him my no matter what. Yeah, I gave him, I'm going to just do what everybody else is not doing. Pick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I got you. I got you. What did you take from that, Bananas? I have no idea. I'm lost. Because <laughs> the way you started that, I thought, oh, you uh, went with Joe Alt. But I'm uh, thinking now that you didn't based on how that. that it did. Yeah. That took a. An odd turn. Hey, well, you taught me well. <laughs> you learned that from him, not me. So I, I went with a Dunze. A Dunze is my guy. I think he's going to be there. You know me. I like listening to everybody's podcasts and mock drafts and everything. <laughs> no, you watch. He'll be the one guy. Some nutty story will come out the week of that. You know, one of his legs are longer than the other, or something like that. A Dunze. Yeah. I just, I just didn't want to go with the conventional. And actually, I, I, I want him to take all, or, you know, the best tackle on the board at the time. But I just uh, kind of wanted to go with the curveball. I'm pretty sure everybody here. You locally, went with Bowers. No, I did not. Oh. <laughs> I got you. You know, I love Bowers because I said that multiple times. Yes. No, who have I been talking about today to run after the catch? Oh. Only neighbors. Yes, Only neighbors. I, did. I, did. I am I am on alt. I am the, I'm on the alt train unless he's not there. Then I'm fine with going neighbors. I, I if Alt's not there, I'm going neighbors, Adunze, and then Bowers as my next three. If you're gonna pick it, if you're gonna pick at seven, if you're gonna trade back, I would be okay with trading back and taking Bowers, or trading back and taking Mims. I don't want Latham. I think I've been pretty hard on that. I don't want Jay Z Latham. I don't think he's gonna be a left tackle in the league. And I know everybody says he's got the ab- athletic ability. I just I don't see it. If they wound up, let's say they traded back to 10. I, I'm just throwing a number out there. That's with the Jets. Let's say they traded back to 10. And then they took a right tackle a year after taking a tackle and making him a guard. And if you had, what, pick 10 and pick 11 over the previous two years and one was a guard and the other was a right tackle, I think people would lose their expletive down here. I think if they're having a draft party, I think fans would lose their minds. If you took a guard and a right tackle, I think if you take a receiver... If you took Neighbors, if you took Odunze, if you take Joe Alt, I think there's a lot of those names, and we'll go through the names of what people are picking. I think if you took a, a tackle who projected to be on the right, I think the one <laughs> off-the-wall pick, if you took, though, oddly enough, is the same guy we're always – it's Bowers. I think if they took Bowers, people would be so excited. Oh, they'd be pumped. At, at number seven, even. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you would have a single person that would be yeah. angry here. at the pick. No. Here, here, yeah. And I would like to know. You can call us or you can jump in the chat like, here. You would get more people pissed off that you drafted J.C. Latham or uh, Marius Mims over Brock Bowers. It, oh, my gosh. And if they if that happened, they, they took Latham, I will go back and watch every single game that dude played. And I'm, that's why I asked Coach Mack, have we ever seen him play left tackle? No. Now, and I know that they move guys now around. Right. But we all know the blind side is still going to be the blind side of your quarterback, and they can't see and they can cause fumbles. So they initially, all teams are going to want to put their best pass rusher there. You can see the guy coming, then you can maneuver around and try to escape. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I'm not with that late, though. I'm with there with Banana. How, how far down... Could the Titans trade where you'd be comfortable with them taking one of those right tackles that could potentially be a left tackle? 
I'm, I'm not. You mean Latham or like like the like the, the Latham guy who's a right Fuaga, tackle? Where they say, yeah. well, could he also play on the left? I, like if you traded down to like the late teens, early twenties. But what are you getting? I, I don't know. It just depends what teams are offering. Yeah, hopefully, a thir- hopefully a third round pick. If well, you if you trade that. that far, I think if you trade back two spots, you're getting a third round pick. Yeah, that, you uh, trade if, back more than that, you're talking second. You're talking right. A, if I get else. another late round first and, or and a or a second, yeah, I may consider it. No, I, <clears throat> With all that's been said, we must not forget the Titans are looking for starting players in the National Football League, not good, solid players that potentially can be. They got to get a dudes with these first two picks. <laughs> yes, they I'm do. Sorry, I don't. And so if you want to add to that and you move back, ah, great. Now we get three dudes. Okay, in the top thirty-eight picks. Now I'm I'm open to that. But uh, uh-uh. uh, we 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 not, you get in the teens. Now you get just a solid. Guy, you don't know if he's going to pan out as a, a star or just a good player or a role player. You you just you don't know. You, you, you could say all you want to, but it, you don't know, man. Let's roll yeah. into the final segment of this uh, first eat. hour of the show. Uh, who are the mock drafters mock drafting to the Titans? We'll tell you about that per uh, Jimmy Wyatt's list. We'll do that and more. Again, join the discussion if you want to. The chat is hopping today. Doom Phone doom. lines too. 615-737-1045. We'll get you on. Here's some breaking news for you. Summer's just around the corner, and there is a limited number of lake lots being released to the public. Yep, coming up soon. Saturday, April 20th, your chance to go and get a fraction of the price on resort lake living property. Yep, all the good stuff. Uh, And here's the thing. They've got great deals on lake cottage packages or estate lots or lake lots, and they got boat slips. So this is the thing you've been dreaming of, but there's a whole lifestyle that goes with it. Walking trails and a new marina and a clubhouse and waterfront concerts, and you just hop on your golf cart, ride to your boat. I mean, that sounds pretty good. Playing pickleball and hitting up the coffee shop and so much more. All this about 20 Minutes from Knoxville, Tennessee. Just a short drive to the Smoky Mountains. Gosh, what a beautiful place to have. And you could have it all. So why don't you check it out? Again, limited property release, Saturday, April 20th. Go to Lake Living TN now or better yet, call, make an appointment to see it yourself. 865-408-9992. Memories start here.
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. We got a feeling inside that the draft is eight days away. Ooh. Nate is calling all the way from Omaha to talk about this. Omaha! Like, Omaha! 100%. He and Peyton Manning conspired yeah. to use the word Omaha a lot. What's up, Nate? Thanks for checking in. <laughs> What's up, fellas? You got it. Yeah. Yeah, how you doing, man? Yeah, I, uh, I love listening to the show, man. I, um, but, yeah, I was talk- thinking about the draft, like, and people would be mad about them picking up the line, but that's been our Achilles heel for years is the line, you know? And, um, I mean, Bowles is a good player and Neighbors is – I mean, we don't need – we just gave the guy um, really a whole bunch of money, so I don't think receivers, you know, well, we need to be a little line, man, mm-hmm. because that's what's – that's what's been hurting us, man. We've been uh the Titans has developed a reputation for just breaking quarterbacks, man. Mm. <laughs> yes, they have. No, yeah. So Poe Jake Locker, man, and M- Mariota used to just get man. He used to get hit so much. I used to feel sorry for him. <laughs> and you know Ryan Tannehill, if he wasn't tough as he was, he, you know, and uh, but uh, but yeah, that's another thing I wanted to talk about is Tannehill. Why ain't Tannehill on the roster, man? Mm-hmm. I was just talking I'm about really- that last. Week and ooh, I was at an event last night. I was at. Yep, that's a good question, Nate. I mean, if I had questions yeah. at the position, I'd, I'd bring Tana Hill in. If I had a team and had questions at the quarterback Especially position, for a security blanket, one hundred percent. Yep, oh, yeah. So I'm wondering yeah, if he's waiting Kirk, after draft. And Kirk Cousins, he get hundred and eighty million. He done won one playoff game. What's that about? Uh, coming off of the tour Achilles. Nate, if you could yeah, figure I'm, that out, I think I'm, you could I'm solve quantum physics. By. Yeah. I'm, 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 <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call. Y'all have a good day, guys. Nate, hold it down in Omaha, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Omaha. <laughs> I think Kirk Cousins is just such a nice guy. Just as soon as teams meet him, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll give you way too much money. That is not how the NFL makes decisions. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of because. <laughs> Being nice or bad or. Man, I, I, that one's a, a, it's basically they saying he's a Hall of Fame player. He's made Hall of Fame. Money. I want you guys to name one player that's thirty-five at quarterback, come off a six-month type injury, and got a four-year guaranteed contract. Isn't that what he get? Or whatever. Three other years, I think, are guaranteed. It's a lot of money. I, I just I hadn't. Seen I don't it. think. I don't know if that's ever happened before. I, that's what I said. I don't think that's ever happened. If unless you're a Hall of Fame type player, I'm trying like to think Aaron of Rodgers. I can see him. Somebody doing that for him. But he's a real good player with one playoff win. Like, man. I'm, I'm trying to think of quarterbacks that have been above that age that gotten that kind of money regardless of injury. You had to be a Hall of Fame player. I'm like, so, other than to be Tom Brady. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Rogers, Aaron Ro- but you, <laughs> it, it, hey, man, Kirk Cousins is getting it done, but I'm not hating on him. Uh, it, just a li- it was a little surprising. It, it goes against everything the NFL is all about. You're only as good as your last play if you're not a Hall of Fame player. And like Tannehill's the same age and has two postseason wins. I know there weren't great stats in those wins, right. but he did win two postseason he, games. He He's not even on a team. Right. Yeah, that, that, and that, that's a big difference. And it's not a big difference between those two to me. Uh, to me, it just shows more that the league is so desperate to find quarterbacks that they'll just throw money just hoping that, in the case of a quarterback, Hey, man, he's the best available option. But I don't think they had to pay him as much as they paid him. So you're saying it's like it's, they were bidding against themselves. So you're saying it's safe, like safe money? Like it's, it's a man, guy I think they, they just looked and thought, well, he's, we tried to draft a guy. We signed Mario. No, that didn't work. The stuff before didn't work. I mean, was Minnesota like giving anywhere near that kind of money to him? Like, uh, obviously I not. I think they wanted to keep it, but I, I don't think they wanted to go that high, probably not that long. Yeah. That was a little shocking. It was excessive. Hey, but hey, more power to him. I, I just, man, wow, that was, yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I think he's, he's. Here's the other thing, too, and I'm dead serious when I say this. I think they thought we can win the division with competent quarterback play mm-hmm. because, because of how their division is currently set up. And those oh, things change. But I think they thought we could probably win the division two or three times if he just plays like Kirk Cousins. Okay, and I'm cool with that. But did you have to pay him that price? Oh, you paid that, him Super that is Bowl where money. I'm baffled. Is I the know. pricing? Yes. I get that now. That's that, that's exactly what they should be thinking. All right, we're up against it. Just tell you this: Jim Wyatt mocking the draft. We can give you the numbers on the other side, but here are the people that are currently picked at seven by Jim Wyatt's panel of thirty experts. Now we can give you the numbers again. We start hour number two. 
Alt, of course, is the big guy there. Bowers got some picks. Odunze, yeah. Neighbors, Latham, Fuaga, Talese Fuaga, which I think people would lose their expletive. Uh, Fashionu, Amarius Mims, who that has to be a trade back scenario. I, he's a right tackle with what, eight games of experience? I suppose that he's got sky's the limit potential, but do you want to do sky's the limit potential on a right tackle at seven? That'd be for an interesting party. Uh, and then the other guy is maybe the wildest of wild, wild, wild cards. And I'll tell you who that is when we come back. Oh. Wayne and Mickey. Boom! <laughs> Hey there, Tennessee, it's Blaine Bishop, and spring has sprung on us. Cool Ray is revved up to make it your best season yet. With flowers blooming and birds chirping, let's dive into how Cool Ray can make this season a breeze. So allergy season is upon us and pollen is in the air. But fear not, Cool Ray has your back. With the $49 tuna, we'll have your HVAC system running smoothly, keeping allergens at bay. Plus, enjoy 10% off indoor air quality products for an extra boost. So are you ready to say goodbye to your old HVAC system? Well, with Cool Ray, it's out with the old and in with the new, and we'll even give you $1,000 for your old system when you upgrade with us. That's right. We'll pay you to breathe easier. So with Tennessee's unpredictable weather, it's crucial to be prepared. That's where our whole home generators come in. With $1,500 off, you can keep your home powered up, rain or shine. So don't let Mother Nature catch you off guard. Let Cool Ray be your beacon of reliability. So, Tennessee, are you ready to embrace spring with confidence? So give Cool Ray a call today and let us make this season a breeze. We're your partner in comfort no matter the season. So here's to spring filled with sunshine, smiles, and stress-free living. Cool Ray, keeping Tennessee cool, plumbing right, and lights bright. So visit CoolRay.com to take control of your home's comfort. That's CoolRay.com.
Good afternoon. It is 2 o'clock right on the dot. I'm Joseph Bonanno from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. Big news of the day takes us over to the NBA where it was announced earlier today that Jonte Porter of the Toronto Raptors will be suspended or banned from the NBA for life for gambling. Porter disclosed confidential information to bettors and limited his own participation in at least one game. A better did win $1.1 million by wagering on Porter unders using information obtained by him. He also was betting on the Raptors to lose. And the NBA didn't like that. Also in the NBA news, uh, sources say that Pelicans forward Zion Williamson uh, is going to be out for Friday's play-in tournament elimination game versus Sacramento after he left the game early against the Lakers last night night. Uh, In the NBA for the play-in for the Eastern Division, the Heat and the 76ers get things started in the 7-8th place game. Uh, That will happen at 6 p.m. on ESPN. And then the Hawks and Bulls take place after that at 8.30, also on ESPN. Uh, In MLB right now, the Atlanta Braves and Houston Astros are tied 1-1. That game is currently in the bottom of the third. Braves looking for a sweep. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Welcome to the Nexus of the Sports Talk Universe. We're halfway through the halfway of the week show. I always like to think of people hearing me say that and then just checking out for the rest of the week. <laughs> like people at their job just like, okay. Nah, they ain't checking out. They check it in, man. Check it in. They're getting the- ready. They're trying to hurry up the time. I think the time hurries now. You're halfway, you're more than halfway through the week every time I say that because I don't ever say it until now. It's 2.02. On Wednesday. Well, so if, if your work week was a roller coaster, you're on the down part now. I'm going to need the sports world to uh, catch up to that because it's been a slow news day. Oh, man, there's plenty of stuff going on. A lot on. of NBA stuff. And Zion's hurt again. Yeah. Some dude uh, bent his, his way out of the NBA. He put up 40, though. He put up 40, though. Man, that sucks yeah, for him. Was, uh, he, I think they said he hurt his hamstring or something. Or quad. His, it was his uh, hamstring. left hamstring. He'll be out for Friday's uh, elimination yeah. game. Unfortunately, man. He, what if his body could support? Remember, I told you, Blaine, there was a, <laughs> there, there, was yeah, a right. there was a player at Arkansas State. He was real fast. He was yeah. a little guy, yeah. and he kept he kept snapping his hamstrings. And one day, I was outside getting something out of my car, and I see him storm out of the football office, and he just goes out and he, he slams his hands down on his car, and he goes, "My body can't handle <laughs> my is. speed." Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think Zion, Zion is saying that his body can't handle his body. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they can't. I mean, just, his body can't handle his, his own knees, body. his hamstrings. Like, oh, they man. just every time you think, oh, this is what we was expecting, and then oh, he's injured. Boing, <laughs> Boing. hamstring. Yeah, <laughs> just think though, if his body could handle his body, which that's his why he's such an anomaly. Is there's just people aren't. Oh man. Th- Somebody asked me once to try to comp him, and I said, this was a younger person. I said, you wouldn't remember, but it would probably be Barkley, who was a bigger guy, just bigger, bigger, a bigger guy. Mm -hmm. Barkley was so explosive, man, especially when he was younger. I don't think people would believe it who watch him on TV, how explosive he was as a young player. Round mound, a rebound, had hops, man, when he was, oh, when he was with the Sixers. Sixers. Oh, my gosh. Joseph. Ooh. This dude that makes jokes on TV, you would not believe how he electric he was as a boy, player. He was and he was powerful too, man. Yes, he was. And they couldn't even stop him. He was only like six four, six five. In he the paint, the post. Yes. yes. <laughs> it wasn't until he got to Phoenix where he started shooting threes. Yep. Like Playing that. in the paint under six five. Yeah, and he used to man dunk with two hands. I was like, whoa, man! I, I, I you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect when he from Auburn like that. I was like, wow. But, uh, yeah, that design, is that's a comp, yeah, no question, no question. Barkley's body could handle his body, though. Uh, we have yet to see that yeah. for Zion. Meanwhile, 40-year-old LeBron, <laughs> 40-year-old LeBron, they kept it going in the play-in tournament. Yeah. 40-year-old LeBron. And now he's got to go face uh, and watch, uh, any of this Jokic. Game because no, he's a function. Dude, you, you were the all-star function of functions. You were naming the people who were there. It's like, who's yeah. who? Everybody... 
Well, it, it, it's for a great cause there, fundrecovery.org. Uh, and Ryan Kane is the uh, president of that. And uh, Al Smith is the uh, you know president of our chapter. So that kind of got me all connected up in there. We had it last year at 1230. But this year was a real big one because uh, a lot of they brought in a lot of uh, Hall of Fame players. So it was great pretty much having a ring. It felt like I was sitting at the uh, swimming pool bar with all the, the guys uh, at the Pro Bowl. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Having conversations so naturally, they they had me sitting next to Warren Sapp, so I could keep him cool, calm customer. Yeah, so he did a fantastic job. But it was big. Jeff was at our table. Uh, Tanny Hill was there. Eric Decker, who's on the board, uh, was there. Uh, but if you want to go, who's who? You know, with John Randall, Lando Pace, Marshall Folk, uh, man, Bruce Smith. He says Jan Stenerud was Jan there, Stenerud, the kicker, the kicker, in the kicker Hall of Fame. Yes, Hall of Fame. man, it was just, it was the who's who all over the place. Delaney Walker was there as well. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a lot of different guys there. Uh, uh, Neil O'Donnell, he was at our table as well. He was at the uh, other end. Brad Hopkins, Ooh. Uh, Anthony Munoz. I remember watching him when I was in middle school. At that time, he was the best tackle in the NFL. Probably we were history. kids. Yeah, he was the yeah. tackle, yeah. preeminent tackle. Yeah, so it was. Yeah, it was. It was a great event, though, man. So want to go look him up and support the cause. Yeah. Buy some tickets, go to one of those dinners. Uh, I'd probably buy some tickets and go to the draft. You'll see the Titans pick somebody at seven, or will they trade back? So here's where we were. Jim Wyatt does this mocking the drafts thing. A lot of you like this. I like it. Puts it out every week, and the list kind of starts to grow of how many people pick. So it's at 30, which he's been at for a couple of weeks now. So Joe Alt is the number one consensus guy. Uh-oh. 15 of the 30 people picked Joe Alt. It's a common mm-hmm. sense pick. Yep. Joe Alt. And this is no trades, no nothing. This is if you're the Titans at seven, who do you pick? I don't think anybody have had any fun with that. You, Bananas, just give us a thumb. I know you're on the phone, but Joe Alt at seven, you wouldn't have a problem with that now. Nah. If they pick Joe Alt, everybody would be like, all right, let's so, roll. Oh, all right, let's go. Let's protect uh, Levis and let's, let's get it ready to rock and roll. Three each different media members picked Brock Bowers, Olu Fashionu. And J.C. Latham, three people each. So that's nine more votes divided three each for Fashionu, Latham, Brock Bowers, a tight end, a right tackle, a left tackle. Neighbors, the Blaine Bishop, the Blaine Bishop interesting guy. Jim, why pick? (laughs) Two, two people pick neighbors to the Titans. And this, you and me, we're not in this yet, but we'll be in, in the one coming up. One each for Romo Dunze, Talise Fuaga, Amarius Mims. And this, again, this is no trades. It's them picking at seven. So there's no, this is who they think the Titans will pick. And the last one is, after all that, one defensive guy, Dallas Turner. He's the wild card in all this. Because if we've discussed once, we've discussed it a handful of times, when you are picking at seven, a minimum probably of four quarterbacks are going to go. Before you pick. Sure feels like it. Certainly three, maybe four. Probably Harrison Jr., right? One of the other receivers. Essentially what we're getting to is this. At seven, you could pick the best defensive player in the whole draft on your board. Which to me remains not. Bowers to me isn't the wildest of wild cards. Adunze, neighbors if they're there. If they pick a defensive guy, that's the wild card for me. And Dallas Turner, by all accounts, is most everybody's top-rated defensive player. Because they keep mocking him to the Falcons. At, yeah, right at after the Titans. He ke- keeps getting mocked to number eight. Turner. One person picked Turner. Mm. Well, Jared Verse, he's, so he's better than Jared Verse. That seems to be the consensus. Verse is like in the, a teens pick for guys. Gotcha. But I'm like you. I watched Florida State play. And yeah, I watched them play without a a, a quarterback. A competent quarterback at the end. Not, not the qu- quarterback's fault, but they were third string quarterback. Yeah, they were injured. He's injured. And their defense was unbelievable. Dynamite. That D tackle? That right. 55. Uh, Fisk. Fisk. Oh, my. Uh, uh, yeah. I, he I, was, I love playing with dudes like that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, his arms are too short, Blaine. I, I don't give a crap about <laughs> any of that. He's going to be available uh, at 38. What I think is not short is his motor. And that dude did not stop. And he is a dog. You, like, you yeah, like him at 38? 
By all accounts, he's sitting there at 38. I don't know if I will go de tackle, but boy, if I miss <laughs> out. I think right now be he's in there, man. I don't know, man. It, like, and this is what happens. You know, scouts start saying, "Hey, man, this guy, just him being on the team is an influence." I mean, yeah, he he uh, his motor. Then he was way bigger than I thought. I thought he was, you know, maybe, you know, like a six one two guy. That's the way he was moving out there, man. You see him running down the field doing big Jeff type things. Six three and a half, two ninety two. And he was running down the field, hitting receivers. And I was like, uh oh, this guy. Does He's the not guy who stop his love and will to win. Yeah. I love it. You see it on tape. He's the guy that you're talking about his on the field play speed uh-huh. that stood out to you. What? For people who didn't notice that. He also had the on the track play speed at the combine. He Remember, did. he ran and like yelled congratulations yeah, well, to himself or whatever. They put he him ran so fast. By, oh, where did he run? Do you remember? Uh, he was in the four, four or five. Seven, seven, seven. I want to say know. in the four. Like I, I, like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> for me, seeing him run a fast 40 is not what I really wanted to see. I want to see his first 10 yards because that tells me his get off, uh, everything else. It, it it plays for you all over the place. It, this yeah. guy's motor is n- like no other. I mean, he was. I'm a, yeah, I was just saying I was with John Randall, who never stopped moving. That's how he looked. He ran a four like, seven. I'm eight. not saying they're the same player. I'm talking about his motor. Yes, like that means his conditioning is off the charts. You know, I, I always used to talk about. It. We had Joe Salave on a pregame. Yeah, he would get tired running onto the field. I know you told me <laughs> that's like, a long ways, ready, Blake. Yeah, yeah, so he didn't <laughs> want to go and back off. <laughs> Don't this dude is running people down the field like he Big Jeff. And I, I don't know if he even has that kind of talent like Big Jeff like that. Because I, 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 that's hard to duplicate. Yeah. But his effort is like Big Jeff. Talent is God given. Effort is you given. Yeah, that's you. Yeah. yeah. I, well, yeah, way to break it down. Yeah. It's, that's your will. This freaking dude, I would dude, not be man. denied. I'm like, oh, man, that's you, you, you love to have players like that on your team. I'm not saying we're going to draft him and how high, but whoa. He's impressive. And I'm up here going to be watching Verse. <laughs> I'm up here watching him. He was in the backfield causing havoc. I'm the same as you. Verse, looking at him, he looks like, if somebody said, hey, draw a picture of a football player, like a big, bad football player. You draw Verse. That's what he looks like. And he and he played like it, too. But the other guy kept catching your attention. Yeah, he, he stood out. And Verse is a uh, phenomenal athlete. I, I saw him do these drills. He was doing DB drills. I went, oh, so he is a phenomenal athlete. I, he definitely didn't have a motor, so I'm not going to yeah. get that, that guy. You know, he, he stood out, man. Finch. He he stood out. He verse is probably a mid round, first round guy. He's 15. Yeah. The Tankathon where they list all the draft picks yeah. and they don't make trades. They show him going 15 yeah. to Indy, which I think they're going to get Brock Bowers. That's just me. But watch him get verse instead if Bowers is gone. Man, that was wow. Yeah, Jared Verse, 6'4", 254, nine sacks, uh, forced fumble. Yeah, he was he was phenomenal. And and here's the thing. That dude ran a 4'5'8". Verse did? Yeah. I told you he was doing D-B drill. Yeah. I'm like, what the? What the what? <laughs> okay, Coach Mack. <laughs> you want a Fisk's 10-yard uh, split, Blaine? Oh. What happened? It's I, one, I, I know that not, it was this joke. Jonte Porter, I hope didn't nothing like that happen. He's gambling and making all these violations. He is no longer, he's lifetime banned from the NBA. Has there ever been a lifetime ban for gambling in the NBA? In any other sport? Well, I always know so. Pete Rose, but. Uh, yeah, not, not from the, not from the, the sport. Pete Rose is the gold standard of gambling suspension. Yeah, but he didn't get suspended yeah. from yeah, the sport. He, he got suspended from the Pete Rose will tell you right now, he would say, uh, if I would have had a boogie, I'd, be, I'd get off right now. Yeah. Joey Otani. <laughs> uh, he had a 168 10 yard split. A, a boogie who was his assistant, I guess. His translator. <laughs> That's what he said. His, oh, so if I had a, a boogie that was my translator, I think I'd be I'd got off. What was his ten yard split? One six eight. One six eight. Do you have a comparison, maybe, for other D linemen? What that looks like? Mm, no, but I, 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 all I know is his get off. That, that that must be a good number. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, his full forty yards is what you say four seven eight, and that matches what you. Again, you're like I, I saw him do it on the field. I don't I don't care what he ran, but even his running in short speed matched his yeah, on the field speed. His get off, he was causing havoc in the backfield. He, yeah, I was like, hey man, this dude here is a little bit different. 
Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you who else he's is special. different. Jordan DeJani, and he's special, covering the draft and more for CBS Sports. Let's get J.D. in here. We'll do that next. Blaine and Mickey Power by All Four Seasons Garage Doors when trust matters. All right, ladies and gents, the NBA play-in tournament, it is rocking and rolling, right? One night into this thing already. Gives teams a chance to play their way into the postseason. I love it. Love the urgency. And it only seems right that new customers on FanDuel can play their way into 150 bucks. You just place any $5 bet, and you're going to get 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose, to use during the NBA playoffs. Man, I like the 76ers over Miami. I'll do that. Uh, big scoring night for uh, Oubre. I feel like he's been on one. He's been scoring above his average. Also, uh, Embiid. I think he's going to play, and I think he's going to get a bunch of rebounds. But you can bet how you want to bet. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Mickey, and you can get started. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Do you have to be 21 and up, though? Present in Tennessee. Minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets. that expire seven days after receipt. Max refund five bucks unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fan. Handle.com gambling problem called Tennessee Redline at 1 800 889 9789.
Let's have a good time with our man Jordan Janney of CBS Sports. JD joins us now. JD, what's going on, man? Happy uh, Wednesday to you once again. Happy Wednesday. What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me on the show. Got to say, I'm disappointed that Mickey did not go into greater detail when describing the Wizenator on FM radio, but that's completely fine. But, man, I love this time of year. The NFL draft is here. The rumors are really about to pick up. Trust me on that. Uh, I love betting the NFL draft. I just published a full guide of props on CBSSports.com this week, including some best bets to consider putting some money on. So, Big week coming up on the website. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be having interviews with potential Titan Joe Alt Ooh. and Oregon quarterback Bo Nix as well. Hopefully get those published on Friday. So, yeah, man, great time of year. I mean, can you just tease the Alt thing? Did you ask him, hey, man, do you think you're coming to Tennessee? So, I will be having the Alt and Nix interviews tomorrow. That They're going to have oh, take place you're tomorrow, having them. Actually. Okay, all right. I yes. thought maybe you had, had them in the can and you were just teasing us here. <laughs> but trust me, that's going to be one of the questions. You know, the Tennessee okay. Titans, you know, that's a very common mock spot. What do you feel about that potential fit? So, I'll, I'll definitely bring it up to them. Oh, you got potential questions that JD can ask. Just hit him up on Twitter, at Jordan DeJani. So, you mentioned the draft prop article. Oh, my God heavens are there so many draft props you got to tell people some of the ones that you like out of all the ones that you put out yeah my goodness this this project took me like three hours to do from you know odds for players specific players to go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten to uh draft position props the first you know drafted wide receiver drafted offensive lineman first drafted defensive player, the total cornerbacks, offensive linemen, over-unders of, of taken in the first round. We've even got team-specific props, which I which I find pretty fascinating, right? You know, what what position are the Jaguars going to pick first? What were the Colts, the Packers? But, yeah, I actually did talk about some of the props that I already did put some money on. Um, one, for example, is Michael Penix Jr., the Washington quarterback. His draft position is set at over under 32 and a half. So is he going to be a first round pick or not? And what's fascinating about betting the draft is that you have to go to different sports books to find the right price, the most attractive number. And at Caesar Sportsbook, I got him to be a first round pick at plus 150. So pretty good bang for your buck right there. I think he's quietly going to go in the first round. Not, not a lot of people are talking about him, right? J.J. McCarthy's been the quarterback behind the top three that's being talked about the most. I think Michael Penix Jr. finds a way to scoot in to the first round. Now, one other prop I want to bring up to you guys that I found completely fascinating was over at Caesars, they offered me a prop, the total offensive lineman amount drafted in the first round. And we know that this is a pretty deep class. We know that there are going to be a lot of names that – uh, are called on opening night in terms of the offensive trenches. But nine and a half, Vegas is anticipating 10 offensive linemen to be drafted in the first round. I thought that number was a little high. I went through my notes and I, I came up with nine. Um, that I think could be first round picks. So getting under nine and a half is plus one fifty as well. So that's something I already locked in as well. Oh, well, getting the getting the lowdown here from Jordan Dejani of CBS Sports, our regular visitor this time every Wednesday. Mm. Jordan, I might have missed it. Did, did you tell us uh, how many receivers in the first round? Yeah, I can tell you the receiver props for sure. Let me find it for you. Um, over under wide receiver number is six and a half, and Vegas anticipates under six and a half. The juice is minus 240 for under six and a half wide receivers taken in the first round. Ooh, well, that will be very, very interesting. Through your notes and talking to a lot of the sources of people you talk about, what is more important to draft, an offensive blindside tackle or a playmaker at receiver or any position, maybe playmaker, running back. I don't even naturally not running back, but playmaker. Why you know, that's a great in? question. And it, it, it really brings me back to a conversation I had with Panay Sewell when he was coming out uh, in the NFL draft. And you remember a lot of people were talking about him going to the Cincinnati Bengals, but there was also this guy by the name of Jamar Chase. I don't know how he panned out in the NFL, but <laughs> I asked Panay, you know, what's more important to get, to get that left tackle on a lackluster offensive line or a wide receiver? And of course, he made the case for an offensive lineman because the quarterback can't do anything and the wide receiver can't do anything if, if he's on the ground and not being able to get the ball out. 
But Jamar Chase, of course, is another world talent, and he's someone who elevated that Bengals franchise quite nicely. But I really think it comes down to the two players. I mean, if we're talking about a playmaker, whether that be a tight end like Brock Bowers or a wide receiver like Malik Neighbors, that's someone who can absolutely change an offense completely. And, uh, you know, an offensive line is incredibly important, especially since we're talking about the Tennessee Titans. But I think there's different ways to scheme around your quarterback getting the ball out quickly. So I think it's an age-old question that's one that's one that we're probably going to continue to debate till the end of time because both are incredibly important positions and ones that I consider premier positions as well. Mm. I don't know. Uh, we're on with Jordan DeJani. If you looked up uh, – Leroy Watson, the offensive tackle that we traded for in the uh, seventh round that was coached by Callahan before, uh, what do you think he brings to the table? And what do you read by, you know, uh, them making a trade for him? Yeah, pretty fascinating transaction. Not one that I really anticipated. Mm -hmm. I did see that he went to Hutchinson Community College, which, of course, is a little football hotbed. Mm -hmm. Um, He went to UTSA as well. That's where he went to school, undrafted in 2022, a former tight end. So he possesses that athleticism you want from some of your edge blockers. Um, But this is a guy who didn't play extensively for the Cleveland Browns. I think he had stints with the Atlanta Falcons and the San Francisco 49ers as well. And I'm sure I, like everybody else, as soon as we saw this news, we said, oh, uh, of course, Callahan had a hand in this. He's someone who coached him last year with the Cleveland Browns and saw some potential in him. So the Tennessee Titans had three seventh-round picks to utilize, and they decided to send one over to Cleveland for uh, this tackle who's 25 years old, Georgia native, someone who, again, I think Callahan has some potential. So, of course, it's not someone who solves all of your questions on the offensive line, um, but it was pretty interesting that Tennessee decided to utilize one of its draft picks before the NFL draft to pick up some depth on the offensive line. Yeah, no doubt. Do we know if he's front side, back side, or is a utility guy, or do we not know enough yet? Yeah, you know, with a player like this, I don't know if we can say we know everything about him, right? Mm -hmm. I would imagine that he's described as an offensive tackle. He only played in seven games last year. So it's not like we can take those seven games and put definitively a stamp on what this player is and what this player can be. But what we can say is that Callahan likes his potential. Mm -hmm. One more question. You were talking about the odds, but... uh... I don't know if you know the history of the last, let's say, decade. I don't know, maybe off the top of your head. It's be phenomenal if you do. Is uh, the betting lines and how much the NFL draft with the betting lines, how much did they hit on those and how many did they miss? What was the percentage, you think? So this is a great question because I the, one of the reasons I love uh, betting the NFL draft is because I think you can find the most value in these lines if you're correct. If you guys remember... Uh, Bryce Young was the heavy, heavy, heavy favorite to be the number one overall pick last year when the Chicago Bears held that pick. But when the Carolina Panthers acquired it, C.J. Stroud became the heavy, heavy, heavy favorite uh, to be that pick. So if you put money on Bryce Young to be the number one pick after the Panthers made that trade, then you made yourself quite a chunk of change. And these lines are completely fluid. By the time I put this entire guide up on CBSSports.com, these lines and these juices are already changing. So Mm. not only will the lines change, but also the juice in terms of plus minus um, will alter as well. Because, again, these are live. Sometimes they, they alter when it comes to rumors, right? I mean, we saw what happened with Will Levis last year when he got some juice talking about him potentially being a number one overall pick or a top five pick. Uh, Vegas adjusted accordingly, which is kind of interesting. So that's one of the reasons I like betting this, because if you have your take and you're sold on it and you bet it, you can make some nice money. Mm, There you have it. Jordan Dijani, NFL writer for CBS Sports. J.D. in line for all the juice. Uh, (laughs) Bill Belichick was in line to get some juice this offseason. He didn't get any. And boy, what a long article that ESPN compiled about him and his offseason plight. Yeah, what a fascinating piece by ESPN. I mean, there's a lot of takeaways here. Bill Belichick apparently wasn't close to landing a job. Uh, The closest he got, it seemed like, was the Atlanta Falcons. And Arthur Blank had a good meeting with Belichick by all accounts. But when Blank asked his top lieutenants for their opinions, right, to rank the head coaching candidates for Atlanta, Belichick didn't finish in anyone's top three. And this was something that we actually got some wind of earlier this offseason, that those with the ear of blank weren't exactly enthralled with the idea of hiring Belichick. But what I really like about this piece from ESPN is that they gave us some reasoning for why Belichick didn't land one of these open jobs. With the Philadelphia Eagles, their brass, they didn't know if they wanted to start over again with a coach that might only coach for two more years. 
For the Cowboys, of course, they didn't want to make any drastic changes. They're letting Mike McCarthy coach out the final year of his contract. The Raiders, I mean, they just fired two Belichick disciples, and, of course, they decided to retain Antonio Pierce. The Chargers was kind of interesting, too, because Belichick didn't want to go to L.A. The Chargers didn't want Belichick. They targeted Jim Harbaugh, and Harbaugh targeted them as well. Uh, the Panthers, you can imagine Belichick with David Tepper would have been an absolute disaster. <laughs> Commanders didn't work out. But the Titans, this was the most interesting reasoning, in my opinion. A Titans source told ESPN that Belichick's ability to build a culture at this stage in it is an issue. So he was stubborn about the offense. We saw what happened with Mac Jones. Um, I guess the word arrogance probably been thrown around by some people. The Titans wanted someone who could come in and be collaborative with Rand Carthon, but also build a culture of success. And they didn't think Bill Belichick was that guy. Yeah, he was nobody's guy. Be interesting. Uh, the thought there is one of the quotes was the only place that it's thought that he could land a job next year would be in Dallas with his buddy Jerry Jones. Yeah, that was another interesting piece about that article. Uh, Bill Belichick apparently told his confidants that he would be interested in coaching three teams, and mm -hmm. all three of those teams actually reside in the NFC East. As you mentioned, the Cowboys, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the New York Giants. And what's kind of funny is that any of these three jobs could be open next off season. You never know what's going to happen. And I think the Cowboys – are probably the most fascinating fit because, as I mentioned, Mike McCarthy has one more year remaining on his contract. Jerry Jones is, is willing to take some chances to win now. Um, so the Cowboys might be that team that Bill Belichick lands with. But I will say this, where, with where Bill Belichick is now, and he's entering this whole new space of media, he's going to break down the draft for ESPN and whatnot, it's not a given um, that he's going to be a head coach in the NFL again. Jordan DeJani uh, covering all things NFL for CBS Sports. He is at Jordan DeJani on Twitter. Follow him. Interact with him there. Mm, yes. Well, Mickey informed us that Tom Brady wouldn't mind coming back to yeah. play if the opportunity presented itself. And I said, no, Tom, don't do it. Just go into the booth. You're making $37 million just in the booth. How do you think those networks feel about all this teetering and tottering do you really believe Tom Brady at, what, 47 will come back and play? Will he or will teetering, he not? <laughs> teetering and tottering is the perfect way to put it because that, that's what I think it is. I mean, when I saw this headline, he had that interview with that guy. It, it honestly did not move the needle for me. I don't believe okay. it's going to happen. 46 years old, turns 47 in August. It's, I, I just don't see it happening, guys. It, it's fun to talk about potential landing spots, but no, I, I don't see it happening. Um, he's going to go to the booth, which I'm absolutely fascinated by. I can't wait to see what he's like breaking down an NFL game. I mean, one of the greatest minds, the, the greatest quarterback of all time, commentating on NFL games and decision-making in real time. That's what's that's that's going to be really fun to watch. But, man, in terms of Tom Brady returning to the playing field at 47 years old, I don't think that's going to happen. Mm. Well, let's stay on the quarterback train. One who is actually playing. Tua Dolphins. Extension? Oh, boy. Is that the right move or not? Ooh, yeah. Let's open this can of worms for sure. I mean, Tua Tungabaloa <laughs> is a fascinating quarterback, and I would compare him a little bit to Brock Purdy. Um, I don't like the word or the term system quarterback, but there are some quarterbacks who operate in this system who don't shoulder an offense by themselves, but they rely on their playmakers. They rely on timing routes. They rely on getting the ball out quickly because some of these quarterbacks, when they hold on to the ball longer, bad things happen, right? We don't say that about Lamar Jackson. We don't say that about Patrick Mahomes. We don't say that about Joe Burrow. But when it comes to Brock Purdy and Tua Tagovailoa, we say those things about. And you can find success, and I truly do believe that you can win a Super Bowl with this type of quarterback. But it's an interesting question when these guys are getting paid north of fifty million dollars a year. Is that an investment that you want to make into a guy who's not necessarily a quote-unquote playmaker at the position? So I think that the Dolphins truly do have all the faith in Tua Tagovailoa. And if you look back at his track record, he has undoubtedly pr improved every single year with Mike McDaniel. And who knows what he's going to do here in 2024. I always tell you guys it's better to be – um, quick on the trigger when it comes to some of these extensions because the market is going to explode. But I don't know if that's the right plan of attack with Tua Tungavaloa. I don't know if, that ne if that's necessarily going to happen. 
if it does, it's going to have to be for the right price. And it's going to, that's going to have to be a number where his agency and his, his camp meet in the middle with the Miami Dolphins. I don't know what that number will be, but I don't think Tua is someone who I'm going to be making a top two quarterback in terms of highly paid in the NFL. Mm, I'm right there with you. Well, with Jordan DeJani, I guess in one more for this year's draft, which team has the most pressure on day one? Mm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good uh, answers you could probably come up with this. Uh-huh. I mean, one that really jumps off the page to me at number 10 overall is the New York Jets because I do believe that Robert Sala is somewhat on the hot seat, right? Aaron Rodgers is coming back. you got to prove that you can build on the offensive side of the ball and win football games. So the New York Jets kind of control some different facets here when it comes to do they pick – a wide receiver, if someone good falls to them, do they go offensive line, which I think is probably the favorite option? Um, do they take a tight end like Brock Bowers to pair with Aaron Rodgers? I think the New York Jets have to be really calculated with how they approach the NFL draft. But I'll give you another team that I think a lot of people are probably talking about, and that's the Dallas Cowboys, because the Dallas Cowboys have not done much this offseason. Um, They've been a bit handicapped by their financial situation, whether it's the Dak Prescott contracts or whether it's these looming extensions for guys like CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons. We know that real contenders are built through the draft. So there's no, there's no reason to be scared if you're a Cowboys fan just yet. But the Cowboys have to knock the draft out of the park because McCarthy's in a contract here. Dak Prescott, he still has some question marks when it comes to winning in the playoffs. And they've got a lot of questions on both sides of the ball when it comes to roster building. Now, the NFL draft is the perfect opportunity for Dallas to do that. Um, so the Dallas Cowboys are certainly going to be a main headline in the draft, in my opinion. Mm, there you have it, Jordan DeJaney. J.D., uh, just on the way out, current biggest, maybe a little off the beaten path, draft crush. Somebody that, you know, maybe not a first-round pick that you can't wait to see where he lands. Cornerback Kyrie Jackson of the Oregon Ducks, a former Alabama transfer. He's got great size, boundary cornerback. He's someone who's been a draft crush for me since entering the Senior Bowl. He didn't really participate there due to injuries. But it's interesting because in some of the earlier seven-round mock drafts, I've seen him going day three. But now I'm starting to monitor him. I'm, I'm starting to see him creep up into the third round. Could he even get as high as the second round? Not really sure. But I think this is a playmaker who has great potential at the next level. And to be quite honest with you guys, I don't think he's being talked about enough. Well, you're what helping fix numbers? that. Do you know his speed at, at the combine or no? I don't have it right up in front of me. But I'll tell you, he's got great size and he's really athletic. I think he can be versatile when it comes to coverage as well. Oh, wow. Ooh. Okay. Well, there you go. There's a, there's a new prospect for everybody to go look up right now. Mm-hmm. Jordan and Jenny, uh, tons of great stuff. CBSSports.com, the uh, draft p- draft position handicaps article, where things are going to go and who's going to go when, overs and unders, all that stuff and more. I went and read a bunch of it this morning and uh, got lost for about 40 minutes. So go do the same <laughs> and uh, follow him on Twitter at Jordan DeJanney. Thank you, sir. Me too. Thanks. Hey, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. He, it's, it, this is not planned. He brought up a cornerback. Two cornerback visits for the Titans that I'm curious about. So we called in two-time all-MAC conference cornerback to discuss this with. And we'll do that next. Two-time all-MAC conference (laughs) cornerback is going to discuss some cornerback visits with us next. You got to figure out who this is going to be. Just join us next and you'll know. Not going to lie, people, I like this NBA play-in tournament. Gives teams a chance to play their way into the postseason, right? Gives them a chance. Man, it's exciting, and it only seems right that you could join in some of this excitement, and new customers on FanDuel can play their way into 150 bucks. All you got to do, place any $5 bet, you'll get $150 in bonus bets, win or lose, to use during these NBA playoffs. Uh Fun times tonight. I think the Sixers are going to get it done. Uh, I think Oubre, who's been on a scoring heater, is going to have a big night. I like Embiid for a big night on the boards, but uh, you can play it how you want to. 
because you just got to go to FanDuel.com slash Mickey and you'll be ready to go. That's how you get started on FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. You do have to be 21 or older, though, present in Tennessee. Minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued is not withdrawable. Bonus bets expire seven days after receipt. Max refund five bucks unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling prom call Tennessee Redlining 1-800-889-9789. So many people trust Two Rivers Ford. Football players, working moms, business owners. Why? Because Two Rivers Ford has been doing business with integrity for decades. Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer.
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. What we got, we got to give it to you here. It's about to draft. Away, uh, so, uh, Blaine Elwood Bishop, two-time Mac Conference, mm. uh, yeah. all-conference at yeah. cornerback. <laughs> Yeah. I was wondering if a former college cornerback uh, could explain, because the Titans have spent a little money at the cornerback position, and they have Roger McCreary, who was a really nice draft pick. They have had visits from two different Alabama cornerbacks, Tyrion Arnold, as well as Kool-Aid McKinstry. McKinstry, both getting top 30 visits here. Mm, yeah. So when we start talking about, boy, what could be a wild card, hey, man. If they leave the first round with either one of those guys, Ooh. consider me surprised. Whoa, man. <laughs> man. So if you take a, a cornerback in the top 38, should they start? Oh, you have to. Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I don't whoa, whoa, think there's whoa, whoa, room. No, 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 no. I know that's a general question, but are you also factoring in what the Titans have? That's why I don't think they would do it. Uh, okay, okay, that makes sense. I, I just... But you can't say that they, they, they should do that, and then he, they have to start based on what you said. So you're going to forego getting a start. So top 38, so you're saying first or second round pick. Uh -huh. so you're going to go forgo two starters, possible two starters, to get a guy that's going to go sit behind the millions of dollars you just paid to two other guys? Mm. Plus the draft capital you gave up for Snead? I, I, I didn't. I don't know. I, that was I just, the question it, by Mickey. I it doesn't if make that sense. happens, they will start. You must not forget the flexibility of Mr. Sneed. You must not forget. He plays the slot. He didn't play safety. He didn't play corner. So your man, Mr. Short Arms, will go have to <laughs> have to take a back seat because those other guys are only playing outside. I'm all joking. I love him. Uh, yes. Yeah, 21 for the tight. So, you know, that, that'd that be interesting if they did that. Uh, and I wouldn't be opposed to that because why? Look at your division. Look how many receivers you are facing with. Three legitimate. We went over the receivers. It's a nightmare. The it, it, in the Texans, yes. So, yeah, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but... Especially if they did it with the second pick. Because mm -hmm. at that point in time, one of the guys that you really like are off the board. So mm -hmm. there's always a chance that that could actually happen. Now, if you want to compare the two, I, I kind of, going into it, uh, I was thinking Kool-Aid was going to be the better player because I've seen more of him. I saw him even in high school doing 707 here in uh, Nashville. Really good player. And some people say he, had, he didn't give up a touchdown all season. So I, I don't know if that's true or not. But as the season went on, especially with the playoffs towards the end of the season, I like what I saw from Arnold. He may not be as athletic as Kool-Aid or as physical, but I think his traits are going to translate a little bit better. Kool-Aid start doing a little grabby. He, you know, like when the guys start going deep, it, it became an issue. Uh, I never saw that with Arnold, uh, even though he only ran a four or five flat at the Combine. As we all know, the combine is only so much. I mean, I like what's the name said. I said I ran a four five eight there, and then I go on my pro day and run a four four five and a four four two. See, so what does that say about what happens at the combine? It, you, you know, it, it, you might, could have had a bad day. You're not going to always run your best time. So, uh, and then Kool Aid, who's supposed to have a fracture in his foot, ran a four four five, which is impressive. If you got a fracture in your foot. Uh, so that means he can play with it. So is he going to get it fixed or not? Or So if I had to choose between two, Kool-Aid comes with the reputation, but I, I, I liked Arnold a little bit better as, a, as an all-around player for the NFL. And you're right. Kool-Aid was the guy that people went into the season. He was the guy that everybody was, was talking about. He was number one corner in the country. Everybody was talking about yeah. him. And over the over the year... Because they're always on TV. Everybody gets a look at them. Now, certainly people looking at tape and scouts, they look at it. But for regular people, it's like, well, Emma's always on TV. I watched them play again. Boy, the other guy's making a lot of plays. I also saw something that uh, was a little concerning. Not playing corner with Kool-Aid was with returning punt. Mm -hmm. He started having the yipsies like Phillips. And eventually, Alabama took him off of it, and they put downs back there. And I saw him do it in a game where they benched him. Put Downs in, and Downs takes it to the house, who is now back at Alabama. I think he transferred to 
Ohio State and then now it's back at Alabama. I think that's, that happened it kind of sneakily a couple weeks ago. Uh, so who plays safety? So you're supposed to be the dynamic corner, and yeah. the safety is a little more dynamic than you. I know he was an All-American as a freshman, but that, that was another glaring. He started having the dropsies, mm-hmm. uh, but that, not a corner. So uh, it's kind of interesting. That's, that's a coin toss one for me, but I, I like Arnold better I, I, for the pros. And the interesting thing about the college game and the pro game is some guys are a much better college player. Mm-hmm. And then in the pros, maybe not. Yeah. You know, the greatest mm-hmm. example would be Brad Johnson and Casey Weldon. People have to remember, oh, yeah. Casey Weldon was the starting quarterback at Florida State over Brad Johnson. Casey Weldon had like a cup of coffee in the NFL. And Brad Johnson played 12 or 14 years and won a Super Bowl. Now, was he a prolific? No. Mm-hmm. He was some big yardage passer. He was a prototypical NFL quarterback. Mm-hmm. But Bobby Bowden, for his system, Casey Weldon was his guy. Mm-hmm. And if you looked at those guys, you're like, the other guys looks exact. I mean, you couldn't draw up a quarterback who looked more like a quarterback than Brad Johnson. Casey Weldon was a better college player than he beat him out. Yeah. Well, that's a good example of, you know, certain things about the pro is different and certain players fit, you know, in the league better and will have better performances than they did in college. Mm-hmm. I think uh, college coaches just kind of go with who was ranked higher and who they like the most and they're comfortable with, and you got to wait your turn. And that doesn't mean the other guy's better. I mean, we got a guy on our team. It's just like that. Will Levis. Mm-hmm. Right? It, it, they didn't even let him throw the ball. It he didn't the ball. <laughs> yeah. never, like, they didn't trust him throwing the ball. I'm like, what? He's got a b- Remember, b- we boy. looked it up. It's like, my gosh, he only ran at Penn State. And all we talk about is his arm here. Right. Yeah. See? See? So that's your man, Frankenbeans, as I call him. Yeah. I, don't, I just, with the quarterback, you're paying $31 million average a year for the two guys. You just got, I just. You Flexibility, have so many, banana. You have, but you have so many more needs, I think. You can push it off till next draft to go after another okay. quarterback. So what would you draft? If you go in your second round, all the receivers that you love are off the board, the tackles are off the board. Who do you what position you go after? I want to I want someone next to help Jeff Jeff Simmons. Let, hey, let's pick this up tomorrow. Oh, good. Oh, a twenty four hour tease. Oh. What would you do? Bananas. Oh, we'll get, get my that. guy from Florida State. Hey. Fisk. Uh three HL coming up next, we got to go. But in the meantime In between time. Peace. peace.